Well, thank you again. And so council member Nick Licata uh, is with us this afternoon. And council member, the first couple questions are just standard questions, yes or no, um, to get a sense of what you've supported in, in the past. Sure. So two measures from last year. Did you support the 2008 Sound Transit expansion proposal? I supported the second vote. I can't remember the date was. So. Okay, the second, the yeah. the real only portion. Yes, right. Okay, and then um, did you support the parks and green spaces? Oh yes, very strongly. Voted for it. And campaigned for it. Great, great. Thank you. Um, so the first more open-ended question is to turn to an issue that's gotten some media coverage lately, and that's um, the proposal put forward by uh, Council Members Burgess and Conlon and then the Mayor with respect to cutting the head tax. Right. And so would like to get your your views on, on that issue. Right. Um, well, as I, as I have said publicly, um, I think that the head tax should be dealt with in the budget process and not jumping ahead. Um, my experience with talking to small business owners that the head tax is a very cumbersome uh, means to collect revenue. Uh, a lot of complaints based on nuisance. I'm not sure it really is deterring jobs in Seattle, but it certainly is seen as a, a tax revenue system that doesn't really work uh, as far as uh, bringing people along, but it does provide a very new revenue stream. And, uh, and actually, Jan Drago and I are very similar in this that we want to see where SDOT is proposing making any cuts if they're planning on doing so or how the administration plans on handling the revenue stream. Now, everything I've heard is that the commercial parking tax actually is producing more revenue than was expected and, in fact, is making up more than what the uh, head tax produced. So, technically, you can get rid of the head tax and still keep the commercial parking tax, but the devil is in the details. And here's the problem that most of that excess, the commercial parking tax, is being uh, used for debt service on Spokane and Mercer. And so the um, bulk of the um, employee head tax from the years 2012 out is actually uh, was projected to pay for debt service. And so the questions I have is, are we double counting? Mm -hmm. Is that debt service uh, still there? Or are they rolling into the commercial parking tax? And how does it pay for certain items, like for instance, uh, for the years uh, beginning next year on out for the next five years, $900,000 a year from the employee head tax was supposed to go for bike trips, and uh, that hasn't been addressed. So I want to make sure that that money is not lost. And I know, you know, one concern that we've had is, we've heard this argument, um, and I know it's one that Council Member Burgess has made, and, and you just pointed out that if you look at the revenue streams of the commercial parking tax, um, you see that we might not lose any projects that perhaps were on the table. But the problem with that line of thinking, it seems, is that we're already way short of where we need to be in oh. implementing the bicycle master plan, pedestrian master plan. And so, you know, having added revenues is, you know, is a good thing. <laughs> Rather than something to, this is, to to cut, it seems. What do you? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a this is a, a classic uh, argument between the anti folks folks um, who are um, are really are hitting very hard on the council. They want taxes down. The economy's in bad shape. We need to keep our businesses afloat. And the other half, which is that there's real needs in the city that are, that are not being met. We don't want them to be shelved. Uh, going back again to. Um, Looking at the uh, the bicycle master plan, for instance, not even addressing the pedestrian master plan, which hasn't been approved yet. But uh, that, for instance, we've got what 2,000 miles of roads in the city. There's 25 miles of bicycle lanes. Our goal is to triple that, not quite triple it, by the end of this year. I haven't seen any uh, reports yet to show how many bicycle lanes we've added. But if we take away the revenue from the employee head tax, then we're going to be further behind. Now, I had made a recommendation that we take $10 million from the uh, uh, commercial parking tax, which beginning of this year was considered to be excess, uh, and dedicate it to uh, the bicycle master plan, because that's a $240 million master uh, plan, as you probably know. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, only 60 comes out of the uh, bridging the gap money, so there's, you know, obviously, 
about three quarters still left. I'm doing my math right. Um, and so, um, but that was defeated in the city council. I put that up to a vote and didn't get the votes. And one of the reasons, and this, the controversial issue is whether um, we need all that excess to fund the debt service on a couple of big projects, Spokane and Mercer. Spokane is needed, and I've maintained right along that, that Mercer is sucking up too much money for the benefits they get. So that's the elephant in the room as far as what I see. And um, you've talked a lot about Mercer and would, would love to talk about it more in, in a moment, but um, if you looked at the transportation budget as it is now, if you looked at that pie, um, how, if you can wave your magic wand, how would you reallocate the slicing of that pie uh, between different modes of transportation? Uh, cars, transit, bikes, yes. peds, and would you grow the pie? And if so, you know, how would you do that? Well, yes, grow the pie. Uh, we need to look at a uh, transportation uh, benefit district that uh, we have the authority to pursue, and I think there's some support on the council to pursuing it. Um, we need to work with King County. Uh, they're looking at uh, MVET and source of revenue. Uh, we want to make sure that we get that revenue that's collected in the city for the city as well, as opposed to just collecting the county and having it dispersed. So it should be a formal basis. Um, the uh, additional costs that we need to uh, devote to is, I mean, the bicycle master plan, you get the pedestrian master plan, we have 30% um, of Seattle's city blocks do not have sidewalks on either side, on both sides, I mean. So um, there's a tremendous demand there. But you don't have to build sidewalks throughout the entire city. You can build them primarily getting access to bus uh, bus stops, local business districts, and that allows people to walk rather than to drive. Um, so I would expand the pie, so to speak, and also include more money for what I'd call the basic infrastructure. And that you begin with allowing people to take the buses. I mean, I think that's one of our strongest elements in any transportation system. Um, bus ridership's been increasing by at least 6 to 9% a year for the last three years. And we want to make it easier for people to get the buses. We want to make sure that the buses are, can run on regular routes. And we want to put sufficient money in for BRT, bus rapid transit. So that's a, that would be my basic emphasis. And then from there, you move on to, um, obviously, expanding the bicycle plan as, as a big number. They want to triple the number of uh, bicyclists from 6,000 to 18,000 over the next, by the year 2017. I think that's a, a goal that's reachable if we put the infrastructure in. Um, and then uh, we work with the state for you know, more the, um, getting the, the multiple car, lane, car lanes and things of that sort. Um, I would not put money in necessarily into money in the uh, the uh, trolley or streetcar network. Um, that was going to be my uh, follow-up question, actually. Is, um, is. There's there's one line that proposed that probably does make sense, uh, cost-benefit analysis, and that's the first hill, first hill, capital hill line. Uh, that's largely because Sound Transit actually will pick up both the construction costs and the operating costs, and it has a high-density population, and it has a high retail cost, so it fits the model for what a streetcar is made for. But the streetcar going through East Lake to the University District or a streetcar uh, going to uh, Ballard, uh, even our own consultant said that that's a very low priority because it doesn't fit the uh, the model that you would use a streetcar for. The uh, streetcars are also 50% more costly to operate than buses. So every time you do a streetcar, uh, we're taking bus hours away from the bus system. And again, that doesn't pencil out because you really want to do, you want to look at the entire transportation system as holistic. The goal should be to increase the number of people who are taking multimodal transportation into the core because that's where we have 200,000 people a year coming into the central business district. So that's the system you want to continue to think about. The problem with the, uh, the, the proposed uh, citywide streetcar network, it's piecemeal. It doesn't fit into that plan. And I, I will say that um, although I was opposed to it, I was able to get sufficient wording in there so that I actually supported it because Tom Rasmus and I worked to make sure that they would not pursue any of those elements unless they could show that bus service would not be uh, uh, cut and that it would be cost effective. So I felt comfortable with that.